Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Saturday, March 9th. Yes, a Saturday edition of Duval Daily. The Jaguars are bringing in veteran center Mitch Morse for a visit. We're going to talk about that here today. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out GinJag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. So talking about Mitch Morse, he was recently released by the Bills, has already visited with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, why was he released by the Bills? You always have to ask if somebody hits free agency, if they're av- available, the question is why? For me, the answer to that is simple. The Buffalo Bills had to clear a ton of cap space after overspending, kind of pushing their chips in over the last couple years. And Mitch Morris, along with several other very good veteran players, have been released by the Bills because they got to get cap compliant, right? They got to reset a little bit with what they have going on. Mitch Morris, who had been there for a while, Uh, is now available on the free agent market, and he's available to visit teams right now because he was released, right? Free agency doesn't really start until Wednesday. Obviously, the legal tampering period kicks things off on Monday, but players that have been released, they can go visit teams right now. They can sign right away. So Mitch Morris is available to be signed before free agency starts. That is an enticing part of this conversation, right? Uh, Being able to get a guy before all the numbers start flying around and, um, you know, all the craziness of free agency. And this is a robust center market in free agency this year. There's no question about that. Mitch Morris adds to that. Longtime starter and captain for the Buffalo Bills. Second round in, uh, pick in 2015 by the Kansas City Chiefs. So he's played in Kansas City and Buffalo, two very good organizations. Made the Pro Bowl in 2022. Has never won the big game, never won the Super Bowl. At 32 years old, I think he's hunting for a title run, looking for a championship ring, right? Uh, The Jaguars, they've never won a title either should the two come together to try to get that Lombardi to Duval County. Uh, We'll talk about it here. Why do the Jaguars need a center? They drafted Luke Fortner two years ago. So far has not panned out. He is an older prospect, was an older prospect, is now an older third-year veteran than most of these guys. Uh, Strength issues. Issues with assignment sound football, right? Lots of issues for Luke Fortner in 2023. Uh, 2022, as a rookie, was not a a tremendous rookie season or anything like that. I don't think you left that rookie season feeling like you have a future pro bowler on your hands. But you thought maybe you take a step forward in year two. Instead, he kind of took a step backwards for the Jaguars in year two. It was a really disappointing year at center for Jacksonville. And... It impacted the running game, and and even more importantly, it impacted Trevor Lawrence's ability to uh, feel comfortable in the pocket, and it impacted Press Taylor and Doug Peterson in the play calling. Uh, They they just felt like they couldn't get anything done with the lack of protection up the middle. So does Mitch Morse make more sense from an on-field perspective than some of the other free agent centers? We're going to talk about that here. You've got Connor Williams, who one of the best centers in the game, He's coming off a week 14 ACL injury. So banking on a guy coming off an injury that late in the season, a serious injury, it's going to take some rehab time. Banking on him to be ready to go early on in 2023 might not be the best bet. Banking on him, or in 2024, excuse me, banking on him to be at his best at any point in the 2024 season might not be the best bet. So that's certainly one where... uh, There's more questions than answers right now, but you do know when he's fully healthy, very good center in the NFL. Lloyd Cushenberry and Andre James, they're a lot younger, maybe a little bit better at this point than Mitch Morse is. Um, They're going to cost more, though, a lot more, in my opinion. And they would impact the comp pick formula, Uh, whereas Morse, because he was released, would not. So you sign him, and that's going to have zero impact on whether you get comp picks in 2025, and the Jaguars were officially awarded two comp picks this year. Losing Juwan Taylor gets them a third, and losing Arden Key gets them a sixth, right? Um, looking at the measurables for Mitch Morris, he does have shorter arms than Trent Baalke prefers, but that matters a lot less when you're talking about proven veterans who have been there and done that, proven they can get the job done in the NFL. Uh, so I don't think that that would be uh, an issue really for Trent Baalke. Uh, ultimately, to me, if the Jaguars want a short-term option that is going to help them win now, 
Morris makes a good bit of sense. Uh, is he the most talented or skilled guy on the market right now? Is he the longest term option on the market right now? No, absolutely not. But he also won't be the most expensive. He also won't impact the comp pick formula. You also could potentially sign him before the start of free agency. If it's a good fit, if it makes sense, right? He is visiting the Jaguars. You could put an offer on the table that he's ready to accept because he likes the uh, chances of winning down here in Duval County and and you offer a legitimate offer, put something on the table there. I think he's a very good short-term option because he is pretty good on the field, pretty good pass protector, a big upgrade over what you have. He's also a leader. He's played a ton of playoff football, both in Kansas City and Buffalo. He's a guy that's been in the playoffs pretty much every year of his career. He's chasing a ring. Jaguars are in a championship window. Uh, So to me, the fit makes a good amount of sense. But if I sign him, that has no impact on whether or not I'm looking for an interior offensive lineman or a center in the the draft because it's a short-term option. Like I don't think you bring in Mitch Morse to start and then kind of have Luke Fortner under his wing and then whenever Morse needs to retire or move on, Luke Fortner takes over. I don't think you should be banking on Luke Fortner being a quality starter at any point in his career at this point in time. I'm not saying you cut him unless you go through this 2024 offseason, you know, spring and summer, uh, and it's just not looking good for him and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to make your football team. That's one thing. Uh, but I think you keep him around as as a backup, as a depth piece. But I don't think you ever plan on him really becoming that dude that you hoped he would be when you drafted him early in the third round in 2022. It just doesn't look like he's going to be that. Again, going into his third year now, he is an older guy uh, to be entering his third season. So it doesn't look like the development is going to happen. You never want to completely write someone off, obviously, which is why I say you keep him around, see how it goes. Um, But I don't know that he's going to be your answer if you do sign a Mitch Morris or a different free agent center um, down the road, right? Now, could Trent Baalke be looking at it like, oh, well, we'll bring in a veteran, teach up Luke Fortner a little bit. He can learn from somebody who's been there and done that at a high level for a long time. Yeah, Trent Baalke could be thinking that way because he's the one who drafted Luke Fortner. He's going to want Luke Fortner to pan out eventually. But for me... I don't think that that is the case. I don't think that uh, the Jaguars should be banking on that at all. But I would definitely be good with with bringing Mitch Morrison to start in 2024. I'd be good with um, many of the free agent options that the Jaguars have available to them at center. But again, because he doesn't impact the comp pick um, situation formula, because he is a veteran who's played a ton of playoff football, because he's pretty damn good still, and because he would bring a level of steadiness, in my opinion, you talk about having a veteran in Cam Robinson, a veteran in Brandon Sheriff, a veteran in Mitch Morris, a veteran in Ezra Cleveland along your offensive line, and obviously Anton Harrison as well. Walker Little is a uh, backup. I think that makes a lot of sense for the Jaguars. I think he would bring the right attitude, the right mindset to the organization. I'm also good with Jackson Powers Johnson, Graham Barton, or Zach Frazier. Because I think they are all fantastic prospects. I think all three of them are, you know, first round talents. But they aren't as sure of a thing as Mitch Morse because we have seen Mitch Morse do it for a very long time or some of the other vets. We've seen Lloyd Cushenberry thrive for the last couple of years. We've seen Andre James thrive for the last couple of years. So should the Jaguars sign Mitch Morris? In my opinion, probably because it's going to have less of an impact on your long term future. Um, but he is not their only quality option. Certainly not. There are plenty of options on the table for the Jaguars at the center position, but if they want to get the most experienced guy, the guy with the playoff experience, the guy who's been a team captain, a leader, and and who's been through a lot in his NFL career and is still chasing that ring, Mitch Morris could be the guy for them. So we'll see how it plays out. Again, he already visited the Pittsburgh Steelers. He will not impact the comp pick formula. Um, he can sign before free agency starts. So there's definitely some uh, advantages to signing a Mitch Morris for some of the other free agents. We will uh, have continued coverage of free agency coming up this week. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now. Y'all have a good one.